You gonna hang out with us? I have to bribe her to stay. Thank you. Can you face the camera? It's that way. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Ninja and I are welcoming you back to another Flight Sim 2020 lesson. Okay, a couple things right off the bat. Please make sure that you go and watch the first episode of these super, super basic tutorials that I started last week before moving on to this one. Next thing, we do have Discord. Link is in the description. There is also my Instagram there and my current gaming setup and current controllers. Most frequently asked questions. Please go check the description box below for that information. Okay, let's get started. So as a review for last week's basic information that we kind of covered, we talked about different attitudes. We talked about different aircraft movements. I give you guys a couple pointers. So go make sure that you review that or you go and check it out if you haven't yet, because the information that I talked about in that video is going to be used to build on for this next lesson. So in terms of a little a preamble of what we're gonna be covering today, we're gonna be talking about trimming your aircraft for the different attitudes that we talked about last week. We're also going to be covering how to maintain a certain heading or a certain direction, or in other words, correcting for wind or crabbing into the wind. We're also going to be covering climbs and descents. I'm going to be talking about the basic circuit pattern. And then lastly, we're going to be talking about landing your aircraft from the circuit as well. So before we get deeper into today's lesson, I just wanted to share something with you all. I'm really excited to share that this video is actually brought to you by NordVPN. So if you guys weren't aware already, VPN stands for a virtual private network that gives you the privacy and anonymity and that you might be looking for when you're using the internet. Essentially what it does is that it creates a private network from, from your public internet connection and it masks your actual current location. The reason why that's great is because it doesn't actually uh, send off all your information and your data to your internet service provider or to potential hackers that are also on different public networks. Say, for example, you're using the Wi-Fi at a coffee shop or going traveling and you're using the Wi-Fi at an airport. NordVPN is compatible with most of the operating systems that you're probably already currently using and it doesn't log your data. So again, it's a way to increase your privacy and it's a way to actually just surf the internet without having your location tied into it or without being limited with your location. So an example of that would be, say, if you're looking for flight tickets and some certain locations are discounted, whereas others aren't. Or another example would be to be able to use different sides of Netflix. So an American uh, subscription Netflix versus a Canadian one. NordVPN has really fast servers and you have access to customer service support that's available 24 seven, as well as a 30 day money back guarantee in case you're not happy with their service. A special offer for every single one of you, there is 68, I don't know why it's 60, but 68% off plus a one month free off of a subscription, which works out to be about $3.71 per month if you use the link in the description below, like I mentioned, or if you go and check out the link at www.nordvpn.com slash pilot Emily. Thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. And now back to the lesson. Okay, so what I've done is I've just actually got us going airborne. We're close to about 5,000 feet. We're again in an area where we can really nicely see the horizon in the distance. So I first wanted to talk about maintaining a heading or crabbing for a specific direction to correct for the wind. So in this situation right here, we're just going to be maintaining level flight. So again, maintaining close to 5,000 feet. But again, I don't want you guys focusing on the instruments. I want you guys to focus on the picture. So we're going to be looking to establish a cruise attitude while we're doing this exercise. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at as a, what I would recommend would be to aim to a certain aim point in the distance. So for today, I was really looking to see um, that we aim towards this lake in the distance. So the best way to start recognizing how to correct for wind is to look in the distance to see your movement or relative to the aim point in the distance. So for example, if I started to notice that as I'm pointing my nose towards the edge of the lake, I started to notice that I would drift started to notice that I was drifting in one direction, that would mean that the wind is coming, say in this example, from my left 
pushing me to the right. So to be able to correct and maintain on my course or my path, I would want to increase, so head into the wind and then level my wings once again, and then gauge to see whether or not that crab, which is turning your aircraft into the wind, was sufficient to correct for that wind itself. So that's the, the, the word if you've heard crabbing before, that's the definition. So in this situation, say we're trying to maintain a specific direction, we can't maintain it because the wind is pushing us, we're going to crab. Now, if you notice that you've turned into a direction and it's actually too much into the opposite direction now, and you're sliding or you're, you're moving kind of to the left of your target, you then know that you've overcompensated for the wind. So you've crapped too much in that direction. And in that situation, you can just as easily decrease the amount of crab and continue heading towards the lake. Now, if I pitch my nose down, tiny bit or if I look ahead I could see that I'm still aiming for the edge of the lake so my my aim point so that's really just crabbing into the wind so it's gonna be really important for you when you practice your circuit pattern around the airport or it's gonna be really important if you've been trying out the strong winds challenge where you've been kind of drifting on either side of the runway path so this is really gonna be that skill that you need to correct for that Okay, so the next skill that we're gonna talk about, it's not yet back into the sim, but I just wanted to review a couple of really, really basic things that you should be keeping in mind when you're flying in the flight simulator. So the most important thing that a lot of instructors will, will tell you and something that pilots know super, super well is your power plus your attitude is gonna give you your performance. Now, I'm not gonna go into the crazy, crazy details and the specifics of this. There's probably tons of videos to review this, but we kind of break down our flying into two different different um, circumstances or setups, I should say. We have our normal flying and we have our slow flying, or as some other, other people call it, your back end of the power curve. So in normal flight, your attitude is going to give you your altitude. And what I mean by that is when the aircraft is flying along in a pretty fast relatively, but a fast setup, your attitude that you set up, so the nose up or your nose down attitudes are going to control the altitude that you're going to get. And then opposite to that, the power setup that you have is going to control your airspeed. So if we break that down into say, when you're accelerating or flying along in cruise flight, if I were to maintain my pitch attitude to cruise and increase my power, it's actually going to increase my airspeed. And I can confirm that with the airspeed indicator. Now, on the back end of things, so when we're talking about slow flight, my attitude is going to control my airspeed and my power is going to control my altitude. So the reason why this is really, really important is because when we are now dealing with the aircraft in a slower configuration, the controls are actually reversed. And this is really important to make sure that you maintain safety of your aircraft. So when you're coming in for a descent or when you're coming in for the approach and you're noticing that the aircraft is too slow, a lot of people will start to add power, but this is actually the incorrect input that you're supposed to add. So if you're actually noticing that your aircraft is too slow on your approach, that actually means that you need to be controlling your attitude differently. So you need to be correcting with your attitude. So really, if your aircraft is showing that it has too, it, that is, it is too slow, that means that you're pitching up too much. So to correct for it, you would want to pitch down appropriately. Now, the same can be said, if you're noticing that your aircraft altitude is decreasing too much, you don't want to be pitching up or down to correct for that. You actually wanting to be adding or reducing power. So remember that your power plus attitude equals performance. Okay, now that we talked about that, let's just review climbs and descents as a procedure. So what are the steps that we need to do to establish climbs and descents properly? So let's just say in this example here, I'm flying along and I'm noticing that I would like to descend. The acronym that we want to set up is P-A-T. So power, attitude, trim. So you're first going to be reducing your power to start your descent, then letting the aircraft nose come down a little bit because naturally it will want to do that. So your attitude and then trim. So trim the aircraft to maintain that new attitude that you've set up. Ideally, this is a perfect segue to talk about trimming, but ideally the pressure that you have on the actual yoke or the control column of the aircraft should be 
nil. It should be able to maintain the new attitude without your input once you've set it up. So a lot of people are constantly fighting the controls and that really goes to show that they haven't trimmed the aircraft properly. So if I were to let go of my uh, of my yoke here, I'd wanna make sure and see that the attitude doesn't change. So here I can let go. My aircraft is actually just maintaining exactly the picture that I'm looking for. Now, in terms of recovery for descents, it's gonna be the exact same thing. So power first, attitude, and then re-trimming. So in this case, I wanna reestablish a cruise attitude and I'm gonna trim for that new picture. Okay, now in terms of a climb, if we wanted to work on that procedure, you're actually going to be flipping the A and the P. So instead of power attitude trim for a climb, it's going to be attitude, power, trim. You wanna set the attitude first in the event that you're actually already quite fast and you don't wanna be blasting the power just yet. So if we wanted to climb here, we're going to be pitching our nose up first, adding the power, and then trimming for this new attitude. So in this case here, let's just say that I'm trying to establish a gentle nose up attitude, and I'm gonna trim the aircraft so that I can let go of my controls and it'll maintain that. So we can see here that my aircraft is now trimmed for a nose up or correction, it's trimmed for a climb. And for recovery, we're going to be doing the exact same thing. So attitude, power, and trim. So reducing your attitude first, adding your power to let the aircraft accelerate and then trimming for the new cruise. So now for the next step, I'm actually gonna be talking my way through a circuit pattern and you can all follow along and practice. And this is gonna be the perfect setup so that we can eventually talk about our landings. Okay, so here we are in Peterborough Airport. This is actually where I did a lot, a lot of my flight instructing. So I figured I'd pick an airport that I'm really familiar with to make it nice and easy. So before we get into the circuit, I just wanted to cover a couple of definitions for you all. So a circuit is essentially a way to orient or to practice a pattern around a, uh, a runway to practice your takeoffs, your landings, and your procedures for getting comfortable with the aircraft. So a circuit is broken down into, I guess, five different legs. You have your takeoff, you have your crosswind, which is your first turn, you have your downwind, your base leg, and lastly, your final leg coming in. I'm gonna be referring to those terms as we're flying into the circuit for today. The runway is runway 27. The elevation of Peterborough Airport is about 650 or so, if I'm looking, that looks about right. And our circuit altitude, typically we're doing it at a thousand feet above ground. So in this case, it'll be 1,600 and 50 feet for today. Um, I also like to kind of visualize and think about my different circuit um, headings to keep myself kind of oriented. So as we're departing runway 27 and we're doing a left-hand turn, we're actually gonna be now flying south. And then as we're doing our downwind leg, we're gonna be flying uh, east instead. And then as we're turning our base, we're gonna be flying north. And then lastly, turning inbound to a final, we're gonna be lined up with 270 once again. I like to kind of do that in my head ahead of time so that I don't constantly scan down and try to figure it out as I'm flying along. Okay, I think that's it. Let's get into the circuit. There is takeoff power. Airspeed is alive. Okay, and rotate, here we go. So my first attitude that I'm gonna be looking to establish is going to be a medium nose up attitude. To everybody telling me to get track IR, there's none in Canada, okay? I can't order any. <laughs> All right, so in terms of starting my turn for crosswind to the left, we wanna typically start at after about 500 feet AGL. This just gives us enough terrain clearance to in the event of an engine failure. So I'm gonna start my turn and I'm gonna be looking to establish a gentle left turn as well as keeping my medium nose up attitude. A gentle left bank, I'm sorry. Uh, with the medium nose up attitude. Now I'm glancing down to my heading indicator to make sure that I start my rollout close to the heading of south, like we talked about earlier, while still maintaining my medium nose up attitude. 
Now this is where obviously being able to look at the runway would be helpful, but this looks about a right distance back to now start my downwind. So again, a gentle bank as well as a medium nose up attitude, and then starting to actually level my nose down to start establishing cruise because I'm close to my circuit altitude. Then I'm gonna continue my turn until I get to about a heading of east to keep my pattern a nice and square. Now, a good reference point for your distance from the airport is going to be about half a wing strut away. So I'm a little bit close. I'm just going to angle myself out a little bit, reduce my power since I'm at altitude and trim the aircraft. Okay, so this is starting to look like a better distance back. So of course, if we were actually flying this in real life, we would go through the entire checklist and getting our aircraft ready for our approach. In this situation, we're just gonna keep it nice and basic and focus on the flying. So now that I've nice and trimmed out my aircraft, like I'm not pulling or pushing onto the control column, nice and established, I can start slowing my aircraft down because I know that I'm gonna be starting my descent shortly. 45 degrees from the runway is a nice start, uh, a reference point to start your turn. So I'm actually going to decrease my power now. So power Power, attitude, trim. Once I reduce my power, I can set my aircraft up for a nose down attitude. So first I wanna start with the gentle nose down just to keep my aircraft slowing down. And then I can start adding some flaps. And then once I've established a new attitude because my aircraft's going to pitch down, I can then continue to increase my flaps. So here we're looking for more of a medium nose down attitude, keeping my aircraft nice and slow. And we're gonna turn in to final now. So I've overshot the runway a tiny bit, but that's okay. I'm just gonna maintain my medium nose down attitude and correct myself. So here, a trick that we're gonna start using and that's gonna be good practice for you all is to pick an aim point. So for me, uh, you know, when we're in a small aircraft, we can use the runway numbers. Now you're gonna be looking at how the runway numbers are moving in your windshield. So if they start to move up, we're undershooting. If they're moving down, we're overshooting. And I'll talk about in the next circuit how to correct for that. Here, we'll just do the example first. So I'm maintaining my attitude as best as I can. And we're gonna be coming in for our touchdown. So as I see that I am coming overhead my aim point, at about 30 to 10 feet, I'm gonna start my flare. So rounding out the aircraft for cruise attitude first. Looking at the end of the runway, I'm gonna to start to see whether or not my aircraft is sinking or not. Oops, as it's sinking, I'm going to be pitching my aircraft nose up and letting the aircraft touch down onto the ground. Oops. So that was just a first example. It wasn't perfect. It's a little bit hard to both be doing the teaching and flying the flight sim, which I am still terrible at, but there's a couple things that I want to cover that we talked about in that circuit. So when we were coming in to final, I talked about using an aim point and how it moves in your windshield to be able to gauge how you're doing or how your approach is looking in relation to your actual landing. If your aim point is actually moving upwards, it actually really is telling you that the aircraft is actually under shooting, so it's not actually actually going to be making it to the runway. So to be able to correct for that, you actually want to, you're actually going to be wanting to increase your power so that the aim point is staying nice and consistent in your windshield. Now, if the opposite is occurring and you're noticing that the aim point from your perspective is actually moving down, it's actually telling you that you're actually gonna be aiming past the aim point or heading past the aim point. So you're overshooting the runway numbers or the thousand foot markers, whichever they may be. So to be able to correct for that, you're actually going to be reducing your power because again, remember your airspeed is controlled by your pitch or your attitude and your altitude is controlled by your power in slow flight. And on the approach, you're in slow flight. So to be able to correct for your altitude, you want to be reducing your power so that your aim point stays again consistent. So we can practice that one more time in the circuit for today.
And before I go into demonstrating one more circuit pattern, there's only one more thing that I wanted to cover that I rushed a little bit in my first example. So as you're coming in for your the last portion of the landing, there's going to be a couple different phases that we're going to be seeing. So the first one is your approach. Now, I mentioned that as you're coming in between between 30 and 10 feet over the runway, you're actually going to be transitioning from your medium nose down attitude to a cruise attitude. So you're going to be looking and moving your eyes from your aim point to the end of the runway. So this is the moment where you're actually doing your round out. That's called the round out. And you're now, start, now starting to hold the aircraft off of the runway. What we're really trying to do in this phase is we're really trying to increase our drag even more so we're trying to slow the aircraft down so that it can continue its descent nice and gently onto the runway so you're not pushing it down you're actually doing a round out letting it hold off and you're going to flare so now when do we start the flare so as your eyes are translating to the end of the runway you could be looking at the trees or like i said the end of the runway as far far down the runway as possible once you've established into your cruise attitude you're going to be looking for a sink. Now, if your aircraft starts to sink towards the actually down towards the runway, you're actually going to be lifting your nose up a tiny bit. So increasing the back pressure and you're going to be continuing to look. If you're not seeing any sink, you can wait it out a little bit and make sure that the aircraft slows down a little bit more. If you see that the aircraft actually balloons up and doesn't sink, so that it looks like you're actually getting further away from the ground, you're going to want to be maintaining the cruise attitude, but reducing power a little bit to be able to increase your rate of descent back down. As you do the hold off, just keep in mind that there is a tail at the back of your plane. So you don't want to be having a tail strike and keeping your nose pitch extremely up. You want to maintain a decent balance between holding the aircraft off in the flare when you're pitching your nose up, but actually being cognizant of how much back pressure you're establishing to prevent a tail strike. And then lastly, as you're letting the aircraft come down onto the runway, you really want to think of it as the ground is coming up underneath your wheels and touching down on the main wheels first and then trying to decelerate so that the nose wheel touches last. This is of course for a tricycle gear type of aircraft like the 152 that we've got or the 172 if you're practicing in that as well. Okay so now that we've covered some of those more basics and I've demonstrated the um, first time doing the circuit let's try it one more time. Okay, so let's add our full power and here we go. So takeoff power is set. There's definitely an aircraft on the runway. I keep forgetting to turn multiplayer off. <laughs> Airspeed is alive. And here's our rotate. So once again, the first attitude that we're gonna be establishing is going to be a medium nose up attitude. And then you can trim for that picture that you've set up. Try to use your eyes and your peripherals to make sure that you're maintaining a level um, that you're not banking the aircraft and you can glance down and double check that you're still kind of maintaining the same heading. Now, this doesn't prevent for crab. So you would have to correct for wind in the event that you are adding wind in the simulator. Now that we're about 500 feet above the ground, we can start our crosswind. So a gentle bank attitude to the left, medium nose up still. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, there is my crosswind. And I can turn my downwind now. Again, the distance or the time that you're gonna start your downwind is going to be depending on how you're gonna be correcting for any wind. So here for today's lesson, we're simulating that there is none. We're just doing a straight uh, circuit pattern. So as I'm coming around to my heading that I'm looking to do and close to my altitude, I can now establish a cruise attitude. Once I'm at my altitude, I can reduce my throttle and trim for this new picture. So about halfway through the wing strut for my distance back, that looks really good. 
and keeping the aircraft consistent. Now you're gonna keep wanting to take a look. And again, the uh, point of reference that we used earlier was about 45 degrees from the threshold. Again, this is dependent on if you had to correct or not for winds. I love flying out here so much. It's such a good airport to do my flight instructing. So we're probably about 45 degrees now. That looks good. Whoops, still getting used to this. So we're gonna reduce our power. So power attitude trim once again, reduce our power and start our turn. So I'm gonna be looking first to do a gentle nose down as well as a medium bank to the left. I can increase my flaps and trim. Okay, I'm slow enough and I can increase my flaps and then to make sure that I don't under or overshoot the runway, I'm gonna start my turn to final. Again, medium bank attitude and medium nose down. And again, trying to trim the aircraft for the pictures that you're seeing is really gonna help you in being precise for your landing. I'm still getting a hang of it, so let's see what i can do so right now if i start to look at the aim point so the numbers in the distance i'm looking at how they're moving in my windshield so right now it looks like they're decently consistent i'm kind of happy with how this is looking but now they're starting to sync up so i actually just added a tiny bit of power to correct for that okay now it looks like they're actually consistent now so i'm going to keep correcting for any drift occurring and I added a little bit more power because it looks like once again, we were, our aim point was sinking. As I get a little bit closer to the runway here, I'm gonna transition to my cruise attitude. So looking at the end of the runway and letting the airspeed slowly bleed off. As I see a sink, I'm gonna pitch my nose up and reassess. Sink, pitch my nose up and reassess. And then let the aircraft come to a stop onto the runway once we're done, whoops. So the example that I'm giving you, of course, is useful for a 172, 150, some small aircraft. It's gonna be much, much different if you guys are flying in the airliner. So use this technique to first learn and get comfortable with the different airplanes. The approach techniques will be the exact same. The actual landing technique will be dependent on the aircraft that you're flying. Like a 787 is not gonna be landing the same as a Cesta 152 or say like a corporate business jet type of aircraft. So you can look up the small differences for those, but in terms of your basics, this is going to be perfect to set you up first. Oh, someone, ooh, someone just went into the trees. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our second lesson on how to fly in a flight simulator. Please give this video a thumbs up so I know that you're enjoying this content. Please subscribe to the channel. Please stay tuned for next week's video. We're gonna continue our lessons on how to fly and I'll see you guys then.